Hello, hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Carl Taylor, photographer, advertising and product photographer. And today I'm doing this free live workshop session and Q&A here on YouTube to answer your questions and demonstrate this wonderful device, our new lighting modifier called the Light Cone. There's lots to talk about with this because this product has been two years in development with our partners at V-Flat World. Uh, we've gone through a number of different prototypes, uh, a number of different uh, optical densities to get where we uh, were happy or where I was happy with the design and what it would do for gradient lighting on highly reflective products. All of those of you who are photographers who have tried to photograph highly reflective products like jewelry, metal, chrome, shiny plastic, lit. nearly all product photography has some highly shiny reflective material, cosmetics, lipsticks, um, you know, uh, jewelry, watches, anything of that sort of stuff, it's all really shiny and it causes all sorts of problems because it reflects the entire studio surroundings and your lighting and your shadows and everything in the product. And it makes for a really ugly looking image. And then you've got to find ways to overcome that by using diffusion material and sheets of acrylic and boxing it in and all sorts of different things. And that can become very time consuming, uh, frustrating, bits falling down and falling over. So, let me just give you a little bit of back history. What I'm gonna to do today, and you're gonna love this, is I'm gonna demonstrate this, okay? I'm actually gonna do some shoots here today. We've got a bunch of all sorts of different, highly reflective, shiny products. And I'm going to take these products, I'm gonna show you without the light cone and with the light cone, and you're gonna see this huge transformation and how easy it is. I mean, you literally don't even have to be a photographer um, to use this, which is actually why we also created the iPhone version, but I'm gonna come back to that about why that's even useful uh, for, for photographers with DSLRs as well. So we're gonna see loads of demos today, but let me just talk about a little bit about how this came about. Now, as many of you know, I've been a product advertising photographer for nearly 30 years, and a lot of the products I photograph are small, shiny objects for adverts, etc. And jewelry has always been one of the most difficult to shoot because it's um, a spherical surface, like a ring, it's highly polished metal, etc., etc. So it's totally reflective. So, you know, some years ago, I came up with various methods of um, controlling the light. And actually, one of my classes on um, Carl Taylor Education some years ago, I showed how I made a cone from a piece of clear acrylic, and then I sellotaped some Lee 216 diffusion material onto that as well and basically made my own cone to do the job. And it worked and it was fine, but it was a little bit flimsy. It didn't really do what I wanted. And then I just started thinking, well, you know, I started looking whether, it, whether there was anything else. And, you know, we even thought about uh, the dog collars, you know, that dogs wear around their necks to stop them scratching. And we looked at those, we looked at um, glass, acrylic options, and there was nothing that would really do what I wanted it to do in the way I needed it. Um, so I partnered up with V Flat World. We designed a product and then with their product uh, designer, we came up with uh, a system that really worked. And one of the things that we had to focus on was the material. Getting the right material was absolutely crucial to what's called the right optical density. And you need the right optical density to diffuse the light to get the perfect gradients in the product. Now, interestingly, we, we posted our launch video yesterday and we've had loads of funny comments about, oh, I've got one of those from my cat or my dog and la la la. And yeah, of course, I, as I said, we used in, in, in the R&D stage. As a matter of fact, I've got some uh, dog or pet cone things here, but often, you know, they won't work because they've got the hole is too big, they've got black bits on them, they've got too many joints. I mean, the best one we found with a sort of similar material, diffusion material, is this one. But even this one, it's quite difficult to get it together 
to stitch it together. You've got to start feeding this hoop through the thing and then you, these are in your way. You've got to get it out, out, out the way. And the problem is that even the size of this, this is a large one for a large dog. This isn't as large as the diameter of ours, but also the opening hole is much, much bigger. So this doesn't actually really work very well. It works okay if you want to get away with it. I'm going to show you compared to ours a little bit later. But the main problem with these is the material. The material doesn't do what you want it to do. And let, let, let me give you an example of that. If I get this, um, I'm going to get this light. We're going to come back to doing some demos. I'm going to do some demos very soon so you can see. But if I get this light, this is just a, a, an LED light for photography uh, or video. If I get this light and I take the material of, say, this dog cone. Now, our camera operator is going to have to darken the exposure right down. This is one of our light cone material. So if I hold that there, you can see the type of diffusion that that material is giving. Now, if I bring our material in at the same distance, look at the difference in diffusion. You can see how ours diffuses compared to how that diffuses. And even if you move that further away, you've got to get it right away over there to get that level of diffusion. If I bring mine in at that distance, look at the much softer diffusion. So we've got much greater diffusion control with the material that we're using because of something called optical density. It is a physics property of how the light is transmitted through the material and sideways and how it spreads out. We also had to make our material um, heat resistant because although these are cold LEDs, often studio photographers have got hot modeling lamps near the uh, diffusion material. So stuff like Lee 216 diffusion material is, is heat resistant. So we also went to a lot of trouble to make ours heat resistant. It's not like fireproof, for example, if you burn it, of course it's plastic uh, material, so it's going to melt. But it is resistant if you touched it against a burning hot 650 watt modeling lamp, it's not gonna damage it. You know, you could put it there for a few seconds at least uh, for a period of time and move it away and it wouldn't have buckled, it would still be okay. So it's heat resistant, so you can keep your lights relatively close to it without any damage. Um, but obviously if you ex expect to use your lighting really close to it for a long period of time with hot modeling lamps, then we'd say probably flick the modeling lamps off or whatever as well. But it's heat resistant. So that's another property that we added to it. But the most important thing is how it diffuses the light. So let's get on to a demo with it, okay? Let's just get straight into this. I've got lots of demonstrations to do on different products with different types of lighting as well. I've got a few other tips to show you with lasers and angles of incidence, angles of reflectance. Uh, we've got a whole suite of educational videos um, on VFLAT website as well that we're going to look at. Um, and let's just get straight stuck into this. So what I've got here is I've just got a 35mm camera set up looking down into the light cone on a piece of white base surface. Now there's no product there at the moment. And you can see I've got three lamps here. You don't need three, I've got three. You can get away with really good lighting, most setups with two lights. But I've even got three small little LEDs here. I'm gonna show you with that afterwards. But let's take a really difficult product. Like for example, this is a shower head it's all chrome, it's highly polished chrome. You can see it's just reflecting the entire studio, all black all over it and highlights from the, the, the lighting. And it's round, so when anything's round or curved, spherical, and it's shiny, it's very, very difficult to work with. So if I pop this into my scene here, I'm just gonna get it about central, and then I'm gonna zoom my lens in to just get it to fill the frame. The camera's in autofocus. What you're seeing here at the moment is a live video feed from this camera, so you can see the results actually as they happen. Then we've got another picture in picture there, so if I pick a light up and move it around, you can see what I'm doing. So I hope that gives you a really good view. Now, many of you that do product photography, you'll be familiar with what you're seeing here. These high contrast spotlights, or patches of darkness, et cetera, and it just becomes really difficult to manage. If we take the light cone, like so, this is the large size one, and I just bring that in, 
you can see the difference that making. Now the exposure is overexposed, so I'm going to change the aperture just to bring that down. So we're looking there about that exposure. Look at the transformation. Let's take that out again. That's what we had before as the product shot with three lights shining on the product. But if I put the light cone straight in, we transformed it. You can see my hand there, look through the diffusion material. Take my hands away. Look at that fantastic diffusion that you've got from that product. So simple. It's a simple solution, and sometimes the best products are a simple solution. It's about creating something that solves a problem, and that is what we've done here. We've created something that's rigid, it's easy to put together with these simple poppers at the front. It's got the right size hole that's at a tapered angle. It's not too big. For example, one of the things with like the dog collar method, obviously the diffusion isn't right, but the hole is massively big. So it makes a more difficult lighting solution as well. Um, so we've gone to a lot of trouble to get everything perfect with this. And although it's a simple product, it's an effective product. It does exactly what we want it to do. Now let's have another look at this. I'm going to demo with some other products as well. So if we bring that into position here on this one, I'm just going to move my hand out the way, nudge that over. Let's start playing around with the lighting. So if I pick this light up here, this is the light that is probably on the center. So you can see how effective this can become because you can choose where you want your lighting to go. So I move my lighting around if I want the gradient up at that end or I want the gradient over here. You can, you can move your lights around to suit your lighting scenario. And then you can do little tricks with the light cone as well. You see the black line that you can see down there inside? That black line is actually from the hole, okay? That hole is unavoidable. We have to have a hole to put the camera through. Now we minimize the hole where we can but we obviously have to make the hole suitable for different lenses and um, different focal lengths, etc., and also different camera formats. But the hole isn't always a bad thing because we can actually use the hole to create different effects because we can actually use that black line to create a line on the product that actually can help it look more glossy. Or we can tilt and lift the product to create black lines elsewhere on the product to add more of a gloss look in places and that's just by simply lifting and adjusting um, the light cone accordingly. Let's, let's do another product example. Let me, let me test another one that shows uh, as well just as effective. Oh, by the way guys, we've got uh, Q&A today. So if you guys have got any questions, let me just get, um, let me just get this, uh, our questions up so I can take questions if necessary. Um, so if you've got any questions about how to use it or the product, we'll look at those as well. Let, look at this object, right? Highly reflective, cylindrical, you know, 360 shape design. It's going to reflect light from all over the place. A chrome tap. Let's get that on the table. And you can see it looks horrible. And, you know, no matter where we put the light on this, it's going to look horrible. We've got high spotlights. Even if we put a soft box on there, we're just going to have a big stripe of light. And we've got loads of dark patches all over it. We bring the light cone in. And hey, presto. All of a sudden, it's transformed. And again, we can move the light around to get the best lighting in different positions on the product. You know, we can shape the light around. As a matter of fact, Amber, if you come in and pick this light up, so if Amber picks up the other light, and then let's move that one around and see, let's go in close and then around. So we can affect where we want the light quite simply with just one or two lights to shape our product accordingly. Okay, thank you. Just pop that one down. And then, as I said, you see the black stripe that is appearing on the actual product. That black line is actually from the opening of the hole. But we can also add additional black lines if we want. There you go, that makes a nice look. All I'm doing is tilting the light cone upwards at an angle. And that's basically, this is the simple physics of it. This is letting an area uh, in here of no exposure essentially, because no light is diffusing anymore through this section. So this is blank. And that's creating that black line you're seeing down the back. When I place it, place it back down, it goes. When I lift it up, we, we add it. So we can actually utilize the light cone and the physics, if you like, to bring in dark lines where necessary. Now, one of the other tips, we've got these great videos. Um, 
with our partners at VFlat World on the product uh, website, which is at vflatworld.com. There's a whole section on the light cone. But as well as the whole section on the light cone, we've got these great tutorial videos on uh, which size to use, shooting with natural light, which, how, to, how to set it up, how to shoot it uh, with a no cutout background, even using desk clamps. But one of the videos is actually about adding a black stripe to the um, product. And I show it here. One of the techniques that I do deliberately to add black stripes is to put tape on the product. And you can see, uh, sorry, on the light cone, you can see me here applying black electrical tape deliberately on the light cone. And um, we've, you can either put, you know, several layers or different thicknesses. And then when you put that tape on and you bring it in, you can bring and black can stripes now. in Video. onto the product where you Black want by deliberately the adding them in. So as well as just lifting the light cone, side, you can manipulate like these the additional uh, black the lines the on there as well. So all of these instructional videos are there on VFlat World's website so that if you purchase one of these light cone kits or you purchase the individual ones, then all of the videos there at your disposal to learn how to get the best out of your light cone. We even have a video here on understanding gradient lighting so that you can really appreciate the beauty of gradient lighting and where it originates from because this is this is sort of professional studio gradient lighting that I'm applying here and that comes from using really large scrims in the studio. So we use these really huge scrims and scrim panels to wrap around a product. But obviously for photographers who are just doing jewelry and small items for sale on uh, Shopify or Etsy or various platforms, having a huge studio set up with all these large scrims isn't going to be uh, possible or efficient. So the light cone can solve the problems for you with all of those shiny products. And it's not just shiny metals, it's, it's shiny plastics as well. Let me just come out of this and uh, let's go back and have a look. Have we got any uh, questions coming in yet? Uh, let's have a look here. Um, Daniel Skumharo says, how much is it? Well, all the prices, Daniel, are on uh, V Flat World's website. They're all listed there. The kit, which comes with all three size light cones, is actually less expensive than buying them individually, of course. Emil Hussen, we lose the hot spots, but we also lose the gloss of the material overall. No, we don't, Emil, because I've just um, demonstrated how we can bring the uh, gloss look back by using the black stripe, because what dictates gloss on uh, material? Gloss is dictated by harder edge, non -homo well, homogenous black areas add that gloss look to it. But that combined with beautiful gradient lighting is what gives a product the luxurious look. So I've just demonstrated how we can bring that uh, gloss black look there with uh, lifting and adjusting the light cone, but also by adding uh, black tape. Now, one thing actually, because he, he mentioned there uh, about hotspots, one thing uh, we didn't really point out, if we go back to the top view, so we do have soft gradients there, but if you bring your, your light in closer, you can create hotspots again. Now, obviously I've brought that in close that the exposure has changed. So I'm gonna to have to adjust the exposure accordingly, but we can bring hotspots back in. All we have to do is get our kind of point light source closer to the light cone to get that uh, higher hotspot. And that's when, if you want that higher hotspot, you really have to get your lighting almost touching uh, the light cone to achieve that because it's such a good optical density that it creates really good gradients, um, obviously, by moving the light uh, just a few inches away. Let's look at another product example. Let me move this out the way. Let's take something that may be a, a little bit more common to people. So as with jewellery uh, or cutlery, for example, difficult one to shoot. I'm just going to put my uh, gloves on here and we're going to shoot this knife and fork because occasionally we do run into some problems as we do with all product photography is we're always as product photographers having to move our lights around, move our modifiers around to get the best 
uh, position on the product. And it's no different with the light cone. We still have to work to a certain degree uh, to get the best um, out of the product. So let me just zoom in a little bit on that to fill that. Now, as you can see there, right now, we've got a terrible lighting. If I bring a, a light above, we just get these harsh, horrible highlights everywhere. Um, so I'm just going to put that light down. And I'm going to bring the, the light cone back in. And then when I bring the light cone in, we will see an immediate improvement in this. But that isn't perfect, OK? It's not perfect because we haven't got the lights in the best place. So we might say, well, actually, if I move this light around here, I get a nicer, higher hotspot, a little bit like Emil was just mentioning before. So it's about creating those higher hotspots where necessary. And then if um, Amber gets this other light for me, we can create a nice hotspot on the fork. So we're just gonna bring that in a little bit closer. There we go. And we get a little bit of lighting on the fork and the knife, place that a little bit lower and just about there for me. Now that one's a little bit overexposed. So we're just gonna move it back a little bit. We're gonna look at the overall exposure. So, you know, we still have to work as photographers and say, right, I'm gonna move the lights around, but we can do it in a much more confined space. We're not dealing with these huge scrims. Go back to the live view. Now, some of you have may notice, well, there's a bit of a weird black stripe going on on the, on the knife, and there is. And that is the opening of the light cone. So we can tweak the light cone position to minimize that, but we can also do little tricks, which we should all be familiar with as product photographers, and that is change angle of incidence. I'm gonna look at angle of incidence with lasers uh, shortly for you to show you a little bit more. But we can do little tricks with our products just by changing a very small angle. So the angle of incidence or the angle of reflectance was of the hole from the light cone reflecting onto the top face of the knife. So if we just simply take the knife and we put a little bit of uh, sticky putty or in the UK we call it a uh, blue tack or white tack and we apply that under one edge of the knife ever so slightly just to change that angle of incidence, I've got a few fingerprints on there now. Let me just uh, polish that off a little bit. Probably won't notice it anyway once the light cone's in place because it tends to take away scratches and problems from products as well, which is a good feature. So I've changed that angle of incidence and now we'll probably have a much more pleasing line down the side of that product. And we do. Now that black line has moved right to the edge of the product. I can move my lighting around to discover, I still need to clean that knife handle a little bit better as you can see there. But you can see how I've eliminated the black line that was on top of the product because all I did was add a very, very small adjustment angle to the product. But that's perfectly normal. There isn't any situation where in my nearly 30 years as a product photographer, where you don't have to adjust products to make them look their best. You know, it is about tweaking them and changing them. So sometimes you get something with a flat face surface that's gonna reflect the camera back in the product. So what do you do? You just get a little bit of tack and you just angle it a slightly different angle. So there's always little tips and tricks and ways to do it. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things you can do with elevating your product in the air, above if you want shadowless versions of your product. Um, we're even uh, producing an, another video uh, for jewelers who want to use their iPhones to video jewelry on small turntables. So you can place your jewelry on a white turntable and have it rotating using our iPhone size cone and a support to high, uh, hold your iPhone. You can make videos of your jewelry uh, turning on a turntable with just a few small lights. Now, talking of lights, Actually, I'll tell you what, before we move on to talking of different lighting, because obviously some of you may be going, wow, those are like, look like some serious studio lights, and these are nice LED lights for uh, photography or videography. Now, you can use speed lights, you can use studio flash, but you can even use very, very simple little LED lights like these eye footage LED lights here. So daylight balanced LED lights, you can even use desk lamps, and we're gonna show you the diffusion material with desk lamps after as well. So there's a number of options that can still get you great results. And so I think I'll, I'll show you that in a second, but let's take, 
Let's take a look at some of these questions. We've got a lot of questions coming in here. Um, Scott says, with diffusion, it doesn't look like chrome. It looks like brushed nickel. Um, yeah, on the shower head, it depends, um, Scott. It depends on how you set the lighting. You know, in, in gradient lighting, which is what it's known, and if we go, I'm just going to go to my own website because I've been doing this product photography uh, business for many, many years. And you can see uh, we're always using um, gradient lighting on the products, but it's how far away you set the light source from the uh, uh, diffusion material as to how those gradients look. And then you can see here, this still looks like gold capped chrome because it's got some black lines in it. And it's simply by applying the techniques that I've been showing you today, that's how we introduce the gloss look back into a product. The key problem though, for most photographers, is actually just eliminating all the horrible mess that you get um, in the first place. Because it's actually easier to fix and bring the gloss look back again with techniques such as tape, black flag cards, or bringing the lights in really close to create slightly hotter spots again, um, that then give you that gloss look back again. So, um, you know, that's basically uh, the techniques and that's what that's what we're here to show you uh, today and I think we have just uh, demonstrated that successfully already. Um, next question, film production says no shipping to Germany. Yes we are getting a lot of questions about shipping and we're working with our partners V Flat World uh, to overcome the problem. Um, at the moment you can go to B&H Photo uh, so B&H Photo in New York, the big retailer there, they have all of the Lightcone products listed. They do offer international shipping, but obviously there is a cost for the shipping. We are going to overcome this problem in the future. Uh, we're hopefully going to have uh, new retailers or new options uh, for the European market and also uh, for the Asian market in due course. But this is a brand new product launch. We just launched and unfortunately for those of you in Europe, America is the home of the launch because that is where V Flat World, our partner, is based in, uh, in New York. Um, let's have a look at uh, any more questions here. So uh, how do you get the background pure white in the camera from Mark Ashworth? That's a very good question. We have, um, a video for that, Mark. We've got a video here, I'm just gonna open up. This video isn't on the Flat World website yet, but this technique I show exactly how I get pure white. So here's all pure white background stuff, and it's very simple. It is done by using a sheet of glass to put your product on, and then we illuminate the white surface below the, gla the glass. And then you have completely shadowless products, um, complete pure white, just by shooting on a piece of glass. It's a technique that I've used for many years, even in normal standard photography, but this way we use it. And then all we do is bring the light cone over the top of the product, transforms it, uh, transforms it from that into uh, the uh, look that you've got there, but with the pure white. So that's how we do it. And again, all of the instructional videos are there for the, uh, will be there on that in the, the light cone section on VFLAT's website. So let, let's do another demo, okay? Because I know people love to see the before and afters in the demos. Let's take a different type of product. Let's take, well actually, let's take that hairdryer, that black plastic hairdryer, because many products that we photograph are glossy plastics. So you get a product like this. I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit on this one because it's uh, a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make it fit in a little bit better there. So we take a product like that, for example, I'm gonna have to lighten the exposure because it is a little bit uh, dark. So I'm gonna bring that up a couple of clicks here. You can see, you actually can see one of our paralytes that's for, for the video there. You can see one of our paralytes for the video reflecting in the product as well. But you can see my lights. Look, as I move my lights around, you can see how that is uh, affecting it. And, and the predominant problem with these products is, you know, getting um, all the blackness area of the studio reflecting in the product. One of the other tricks we use in the studio all the time is bringing in white panels, polyboards, V-flats um, to bounce light into and uh, you know to create as much fill-in, if you like, lighting as we can. But many photographers don't have that. They're looking for a quick, easy solution 
We go back, there's the product as it is at the moment. We bring the light cone in and immediately it's transformed. Now it looks matte and soft as someone pointed out. But if we take the lighting in closer and if Amber comes and brings her light in closer as well, we can create a gloss look again by just bringing in higher hot spots of lighting, even closer on that Amber if you want and then uh, move it around the side so they can see the light, move it around to the front, come around to the front and we'll highlight that. There we go. So we can create different looks just by bringing the intensity of the light closer. Now in doing so, we'd have to probably change the exposure, but you see that as an option to start with is obviously a lot more attractive than something that starts off looking like that. So a number of ways of uh, using a light cone to uh, get these great results. And the diffusion material is really, really important. Let me talk to you a little bit more about that as well because we're gonna, we're gonna come to using some other lights as well. A lot of people as well, you know, people, people have commented on the, oh, the um, vet dog collar thing. Obviously I've pointed that out as well. And this is one of the things we're really proud of with, with this material. This is the material that we're currently using and our cameraman's just gonna stop down the lens so you can see that a little bit more easy. You can see the lovely diffusion. Now, people ask, well, you know, uh, it may be, seems expensive for uh, something so simple, but actually it's not more, much more expensive than the large dog collar. But look at over the last two years, how many iterations we've gone through. This is one of our earlier ones and this had real problems with the diffusion material compared to the one we're on now. So there's the one we're on now, and there's the older one. And that's the same distance, but look at the difference in diffusion. So we have gone through a huge amount of research and testing and changing the uh, mixtures of the plastics to arrive, and the textures of the plastics, uh, and the thickness of the plastics, to arrive at something that I was very happy with that replicated professional gradient lighting. And that's where obviously over the last two years, a lot of that research and development time and testing and testing the, the angle of the cone, the size of the hole, the durability, the shape of the cone, everything else, that's all been part of the process uh, and has to be accounted for obviously uh, in the uh, production. Let's take a few more questions. Um, so we've covered the uh, background. Is it available in, in India? Um, well, obviously you can go to B&H Photo at the moment to order, uh, but as I said, we are looking uh, as soon as possible to expand the distributor network. Uh, what if we need an eye level shot of the product and not top down angle? This is a good question um, and we've tested it. It is not absolutely perfect uh, or, or completely easy at doing this but it can be done. So if we look in this video, we look at obviously using products in different positions. So you can put products that would normally stand up right and shoot them at an angle or on their back. But we also look at using the large light cone in the vertical format products. And we can actually still create really nice lighting as you can see there on uh, products that are stood up. So it's obviously not quite as simple but it is possible. But remember that a lot of products like a shampoo or cosmetics that you would traditionally stand upright, you can actually lay down on their back or you can lay them down on their back on some sort of block to keep them elevated off the ground so that they don't cast a shadow. Or you can use my no cutout white background uh, technique by shooting them on the glass. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, any more questions here. Um, uh, these will be so good for e-commerce photographers and small companies from Tin House Studio. Ah, oh, that's from Scott. Hi, Scott. How are you? Uh, yes, they will. It will be uh, very useful to, um, to e-commerce photographers, especially those, you know, running their own, uh, well, not, not even photographers necessarily, people that have got their own jewellery shops, people that have got their own little Etsy shops selling small products, glossy products. Um, it's going to be really useful to those sort of people. Um, next question, could this be available at any brick and mortar camera shops? Oh, that's from David Bellamain. Uh, we hope so, Dave, uh, Devin, uh, sorry, Devin Bellamain. It's certainly available in New York, 
from uh, bricks and mortar camera shops. And then we, as, as we expand our distributorship throughout uh, the rest of the world, we hope to see it there as well. You've got to remember, this is just a brand new launch. We just launched this initial launch in America. The product is available if you're desperate to get one through B&H, they will ship. Uh, but we are planning with the Flat World to expand that out into uh, the rest of the world as we can. Um, is it, Mar Mirko Link says, is it possible to develop an adapter for lenses to use at macro photography? Um, if you're talking about using this at macro photography level, then we've got a couple of other options, okay? First of all, that was the large light cone that you've seen me using, but this one is the medium size. So the medium size one is shorter than the large, and the opening aperture hole is uh, smaller, um, or slightly smaller, actually, you know, maybe about the same for different lenses, but it's obviously shorter and closer. And the reason is that with jewelry stuff, it's obviously uh, usually smaller, so you need your lens closer and your macro lens closer to fill the frame. So that's what the, the medium size one can cater for. But actually, interestingly, the iPhone one is really interesting because we've made a really small aperture, small opening on the iPhone one. And the reason for that is obviously that phone lenses are tiny. So there's no need to make a big hole if generally the lens you're gonna use is really small. However, Keep in mind that most macro photography uh, or product photography is usually shot f11, f16, where you're getting a really small aperture. So you're actually only using a tiny portion of the lens anyway. So it's still possible to get a normal 35 mil camera lens right down close on top of that. And if you're using f11, f16, it's still gonna see through that aperture no problem at all. That minimizes uh, the hole. So again, for getting closer for jewelry stuff, the, the iPhone one or the medium size one um, can help you with that. We get a, we've had a lot of questions over which light cone I should go for because you've obviously got the set of three or you've got them individually. Personally, I think the large one's the most versatile because you can photograph bigger products as well and you can also insert your lens into it a little bit. Um, but to be honest, if I was a photographer running a studio, well, I am a photographer running a studio, but if I was running my studio, I would want the, the two main sizes at least, the medium and the large, but I think having the iPhone one available as well uh, could be useful and obviously the kit of three is, uh, is the cheaper option to do that. Uh, hi Carl, what is the material of the cones? Well, I don't know the exact name of the material. Um, I developed the optical density of it. V Flat World um, are have been responsible on the manufacturing. They've been the ones that have been sending me new materials, new mixes, new densities for me to keep testing over the last couple of years. Um, obviously it's some sort of plastic, heat resistant plastic that we've developed. Kendrick says, it would be great to have a space to clamp the cone with a C-stand, just like a rigid flange coming off the side. Yes, but the problem is we want to keep the light cone uninterrupted. It works by being a single uninterrupted surface apart from the seam where you popper it together. And this is one of the problems other than the optical density, as I pointed out earlier, with the, a lot of these dog cones. They've got lots of other ridge holes and bits and pieces that will show up in your picture as well as the main hole uh, being large. So we're trying to keep it simple so that we get the best uh, gradient. Uh, Scott Fly says, great idea, but why is it so expensive? I can just make one myself. Well, feel free, Scott. I mean, as a matter of fact, I've got a, a tutorial on how I made one with clear acrylic, cut the cone shape myself, had to calculate the right size. Then I got lead diffusion material, stuck it on with uh, tape. And I used that and it worked perfectly well on jewelry. But the problem is it's so flimsy and doesn't last very long. Why do you want to mess around with all the time it takes to do that when you can just invest in one product which is actually cheaper than a polarizing filter and you've got that product permanently in your studio, ready to use, drop into position, nice and rigid, does exactly what it's meant to do and it is the perfect optical density and diffusion material for the right gradients. Obviously, if you, you, you want to save 50 bucks by uh, doing it yourself with a bit of paper or a you know, whatever, um, you know, uh, feel, feel free. Um, Scott says, I think a light box would work just as well. Well, um, uh, unfortunately, Scott, that's just not true. Um, and if you'd been 
uh, nearly 30 years in top flight product photography for some of the world's biggest brands, you would realize that you barely do any product photography with softboxes. Uh, certainly not with softboxes without scrim uh, and gradient lighting. Um, Hulya says, how can we prevent steel from looking like chrome? Um, I'm not quite sure I understand that one. Um, Jennifer says, do you have any discount codes? Um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, we may have a discount code for Carl Taylor Education members uh, for V Flats, some of V Flats products, but I don't know if that is applicable to this product yet. But as uh, members on Carl Taylor Education know, uh, there are discount codes available for some of our members for certain brands that we're partnered with. Uh, Tanvir says, can they ship this to Pakistan? I'm pretty sure B&H can ship to um, Pakistan. Um, Victor Fedusiv says, how about big items like a notebook or a kitchen stove? Well, there is obviously a limit. Uh, we felt that when you get into the really big items, you know, um, like a kitchen stove, or a car or a motorbike, then you're gonna be more in that professional studio genre. Uh, so for example, like here, when I'm shooting cars or I'm shooting motorbikes, um, I'm certainly not gonna do that with a light cone. Um, so there is a cutoff point. And that cutoff point is obviously what is useful for most products in a small setup, or where does it transition into sort of professional, larger scale studio work and um, also from a shipping point of view as well, because these things are sent flat pack. As a matter of fact, let's just have a look at that. Um, these products come flat pack in the V-flat world box, like so. And inside the box is uh, the light cone products in a protective uh, Ziploc bag for you to store the product in. And then there's the product inside. So uh, it's also from a shipping perspective as well. So I, the large ones, the, the larger light cone that we do uh, is the one that we felt would be the most useful size for uh, many people. Right, let's take a look at, um, let, well, let's take again, let's take a difficult subject like this uh, shower head again. And let's just pop that back in position. Now you've seen it with what looks like quite professional lights. And um, I'll put the light cone back in. And you'll see, obviously, that nice lighting that we're getting there. There's my hand diffusing. It's a little bit overexposed from the pre previous one. So I'm just adjusting it there. Now, as you know, I said we can change the specularity and the hotspots and adding uh, what looks like black lines by moving things around here. But what I, what I wanted to show was what happens if we don't use this type of lighting. Let's say you've only got small little LEDs. So I'm going to turn all of these off. And so that's all of them off. Now you see, we've, all, we've already just got a, a, a softer lighting just from the light that's bouncing around here in the studio, just from the video lights. But if we take these type of lights um, and I turn these, let's say you've just got these little LED lights, you know, it's no problem using these sort of LED lights with the light cone as well. So let's take that. Amber, you're going to have to come over here and uh, hold one of those for me. So Amber's going to take one of those. I'm just going to move that out the way. And you see with these, because the diffusion material works so well, we can still light products really well, bringing in the higher gloss hotspots that have to change the exposure a little bit. But you know, you can see that there's Amber moving her light around. There's me moving my light around there, you know, but the diffusion material works so well that any light works, you know, this is like little tiny LED lamps work as well. So, um, you know, th this is the beauty and the purpose of having the right diffusion material. Because if you don't have the right diffusion material, it doesn't really work very well at all because it's much harder to control the diffusion. And it actually gets harder and harder to control the diffusion with the smaller the light source. So when you get down to light sources like this, with smaller size ones, or even the desk lamp that I'm going to show you next, then the uh, optical density becomes even more important. So we've got a video on V-Flat's website. Let me just bring it up here. We've got a video here using desk lamps to light products. Here, we've got three desk lamps 
And we felt that with the iPhone version, there might be a lot of photographers doing small stuff that they didn't even have studio lights. They just had some basic IKEA desk lamps. And that's exactly what we're using there. And that's these lamps here. That's this lamp. Look, this little LED on a bendy arm, IKEA style desk lamp. And this is where diffusion becomes even more important. Because if we go back to the badly diffused material, it's even worse when you have small light sources. Let's drop that exposure on that camera down. So what happens is you get even worse lighting than you do with our material, which gives you a much softer diffusion compared to where you see the hot spot. So the gradient that you get becomes more difficult when you work with smaller lights. But the beauty is that you can still use, even if you don't have studio lights or LEDs or even these things, you can use something like a desk lamp because um, the material diffuses the light so well you can still light a product. The only problem with cheaper desk lamps is something called the CRI, and that's the color index of the purity of the color. Now these ones are tungsten balanced, so you'd have to adjust your color temperature on your camera to tungsten balance. But then beyond that, the problem is that the full spectrum of light doesn't come out of these cheaper lamps, so you get a little bit of a color cast on the shots. But they are still usable. Um, so you know it is still possible, even on the lowest budget, with desk lamps to make a decent photo that you wouldn't otherwise have been able to make. When you get up to these type of ones that have got a good color index, no problem at all. Um, you may find some desk lamps these days as LEDs have improved and improved. You may find some daylight balanced desk lamps with a high CRI that could work um, really, really well. Right, let's take a look and see if there's any more questions. Then I'm going to show you uh, another trick for angles of incidence and angles of reflectance and where to uh, place your lights. Let me just get back into the questions. Lots going on here at the moment. Um, Dang Fat New Gen says, is this for e-commerce or basic user? Professional shots still use scrims with light modifiers. Um, I think it's for both, Dang, in the sense that if I was doing jewellery, this is by far the best solution for me for jewellery um, because it, you know, jewellery reflects everything. Um, so, you know, a lot of the sort of items you've seen me shoot today, like the knife and fork, things like that, I would actually just go straight to this because you've got that all around wrap that you need around those type of products. As I mentioned earlier, for big stuff, motorbikes and larger things, then of course they can't fit anyway. So I'm gonna to have to revert back to large scrims, large diffusion sheets. Um, Julia, I tried this kind of full diffusion cover before, but steel objects look like chrome. We, how can we get ahead of this? Steel objects look like chrome. Well, you, usually that would just be down to the distance of your light from the diffusion material. And also a, a, about, um, like I said, by adding black in there, black tape or other things to bring um, some solid uh, homogenous black lines back in. Um, why is the top of the cone at a slight angle? Oh, that's a good question. Um, because it gives you a bit more versatility. Because if we only had a straight hole, then it really is limited to just straight down. But by creating a bit of a taper, then we can, means we can get our lenses in at an angle as well, um, which can be useful and offer a bit more versatility. It also offers a bit more versatility in terms of turning the hole to eliminate the hole from reflections in the product. And that was, again, that was something that we found through the R&D stages, through the testing, um, these are all the little things, you know, quick assembly, easy poppers, the right material, heat resistant, the best optical density, the size, the width relative scale to the top, the height of the cone, tapering of that top. All, all of this stuff had to be worked on during the R&D stages. I know a lot of people always like to, to bang certain products when they come out. Um, you know, why is it this? Why is it that? Why does it cost this? But Honestly, what you don't see is what goes on behind the scenes. You know, two years we've been working on this to get this right um, with V Flat World, and uh, we wanted to release it, uh, you know, as soon as we could, but we didn't rush it. We kept making it better and better till it. 
did what it was meant to do. And now it does what it's meant to do and we are all happy with it. We're all extremely excited about it. Um, next question. Uh, is it scratch resistant or scratch proof? It's scratch resistant. It's certainly more scratch resistant than the dog collar type material which uh, scratches really easy. We've got a texture on the material which makes it more resistant to scratches. Um, but if you ran a sharp object over it, it is plastic, it, it will scratch. Doesn't mean it will actually ruin its um, ability to use it because the light will still diffuse very well because the optical density doesn't arrive from the top surface alone. It also arrives from the, uh, the way the light scatters inside the material and that wouldn't be affected by a small scratch on the surface. Uh, what is the bottom diameter of the large cone? B&H website doesn't provide clear dimensions. That's from uh, Martin Wolfert. So I'm not sure uh, if V-flats V -flats state it. There you go. 20 inches is the diameter of the bottom on the large cone. Uh, let's jump back to the questions. Um, how would you include this technique in a set with a hard shadow? Um, well, you, you, you can't, but you can't also do that with gradient scrim lighting either unless you put the hard light in front of the scrim and use it in conjunction with the scrim. But what we often do in product photography, and let me give you a good example. I've got a perfect example to show you here um, where you have that scenario, where you have, uh, let me just find the shot, I don't know where it's gone. Should be here. Oh, here's a great example. So here we create that hard sunlight look where I've got perfect gradients in my chrome metalwork caps, but I've got really hard shadows uh, from the products and the layers that they're sat on. But that's done in two stages. So we light the gradients in one shot and then we light a hard light afterwards separately for the other part and they come together. And that would be no different for this. So you could have a product under here, get your lighting absolutely right with the cone, and then you take the cone away and use one light to create the hard shadow, and then those two shots are comped together. That's an old technique that product photographers have been, uh, been doing for a long, long time. Um, if we want to take a photograph with a different angle, what can we do with this cone? Well, as I said earlier, we use a, a lot of blocks and things to angle products at different positions. So you can actually angle a product using a bit of um, sticky putty or blue tack or whatever you ever want to call it. Angle your products with various blocks and acrylic blocks, get them off of the surface. Number of options, but that's no different to what product photographers have had to do for uh, decades um, anyway. Um, Victor Fedeceve uh, says, how about a material color shift to green, magenta or cold or warm? None whatsoever. That's another factor that we've taken into consideration with the light cone is the purity and the neutrality of the material um, that we used. Um, is there, David Bellamine says, is there a measurement for the light loss from the diffusion, like two stops? Um, I have no idea. It's not something that I'm really concerned about because when you're using lights this close, you've normally got way too much power, not, not way too little. So if anything, uh, the problem isn't the light that we've lost. The problem is the light is actually already on the brighter side, which is good if we're shooting F11, F16, trying to maximize depth of field. But you know, I get asked this question about my Lee Diffusion 216 material. You know, what uh, light loss of power is there through that and et cetera. I've got no idea. I don't, I don't know how much light loss there is through a softbox, let alone my diffusion material, because all I do is turn the light up or turn it down to, to suit. Okay, um, that's it on the questions for now. I'm gonna show you one more uh, tip before uh, we pack this up. And this is to help you understand where to uh, put your lights. So if you've got a product like this, one of the techniques that I use all the time is to discover what we call the angle of reflectance and the angle of incidence. So when you have your product in a certain position, you have your camera lens looking at it, sometimes you say, well, wh where do I need to put the light if I want a glow here, or I want a glow there, or I want a glow over there? And we can calculate that using a laser. So by using a laser, we can shine a laser on the um, 
axis symmetry of the lens and you shine that laser at the product, and wherever that laser bounces off in a straight line is exactly where the light needs to be. So for example, if we're using the light cone and uh, Corey's gonna have to stop his lens right down in exposure to, uh, to see this, I think. If I shine, uh, can we get the top view as well? If I shine and give us picture in picture, if I shine my laser here at that point there, and I say, I want a light, I want my glow on my product to be there, then there, right there, go back to the main camera, please, Ben, there is where that light needs to be. So let's, let's, let's show that. So go back to the, the, the view from above. So as long as I'm on the axis of symmetry of the lens, which is there, oh, actually, I wasn't on the axis of the lens. So I'm on the axis of the lens now. So if I want my light there, Oh, you can't see because my hand's in the way. I'll try and well, I'm, try, I'm pointing it about there. OK, so if I want my line of light there, then we can see that the light's actually got to be up here somewhere. So let's just test that and look. So if we pop these lights back on. So this is a great tip when you're working in the studio on any type of product photography is to use angles of incidence and angles of reflection. We've got a really good course on this in Kyle Taylor Education, actually. Uh, but using lasers is a great, great way to determine that. Can we see the, uh, the product? Right, so we can see the product. So I was talking about getting my light up in that top edge and it indicated that I needed to get my light up here somewhere. So let's look at that. So we put that light up there and then we get it into that position and that's where it needs to go. Because this is where photographers struggle. They struggle with, well, where do I need to put the light? But using, uh, using lasers, bouncing it off, as long as you're following the exact line of the angle of the lens and you're hitting the product where you want it to be lit, where that laser reflects off to that point is where you have to uh, apply and put your lighting in that position. Obviously, the size and the scale of the lighting will depend on the gradient that you want to create. Now, again, other little tips. We talked about uh, black masks. So you could run black tape down the side of the outside of the light cone. You could create a black uh, triangular opening uh, a shape of light. You could create a square with black tape. You could light through that and that would create a, a more homogenous looking square. So there are lots of little tricks you can do with tape and the light cone. And as I say, that's covered in the videos on the, uh, the V-flat website. So hopefully today's demonstration showed you the simplicity of the product, but its effectiveness shows you how it works really well with chrome, glossy, metal objects, things like jewellery, uh, any high gloss plastics, cosmetics, that sort of stuff. Shows you the simplicity of the product. It's rigid, it's good, it's strong, it's solid, easy to put together, easy to keep flat pack as well. So if you don't want it as a cone in your studio, you just unbutton it and then you can put it back in its box. We've obviously got the different sizes. We've got the one for the iPhone, if you're only doing photography on an iPhone or you know videos on your iPhone. So we've got that one as well. And we've got the kit of uh, three available. And again, you've also seen how they work with literally any type of lighting. Uh, we've tested them with speed lights. They work amazing with speed lights. They work amazing with studio uh, flash, with LED lights, with small LEDs, even with desk lamps. So we're very proud um, of uh, the product and, uh, and, and what we've developed and the work that's gone into it. And we hope you guys really enjoy uh, using it uh, and making your life easier because that's really uh, what it's designed to do. Now, for those of you that just want a little bit more on the product, vflatworld.com uh, is where the products are shown. There are also the instructional videos on all the various ways you can use the product, understanding gradient lighting, etc., looking at using it in different scenarios and also using the, the, the phone version as well. Uh, you can buy directly from VFlat World if you're in the USA. But if you're looking for international orders, then B&H Photo, they've got them all listed on their website in the different sizes and the, um, the bundle pack as well. And as I said, B&H will ship um, worldwide. Obviously, there's a shipping cost uh, involved in that as well. But we're hoping, um, you know, in the not too distant future, 
um, that we're going to have European um, distribution as well available so that the, the product price will be the same, but the shipping uh, price uh, will hopefully be reduced as a result of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this little episode uh, and live demonstration and hopefully seeing it live, seeing those before and afters live, give you confidence and belief that, wow, this thing actually works. Because, you know, a lot of people, they see a video and they think, oh, well, they could have edited that or it could be post-production. But, you know, you guys just saw it live. You saw me do it. You saw the results. And you saw how simple it was you saw how effective it was. And the whole purpose of this product is to make your product photography life easier. I'm Carl Taylor. Thanks very much for watching.